Now, the White House has called this news conference in considerable measure because we are told the president is going to announce on this occasion his nominee to the Supreme Court. You'll recall that Thurgood Marshall, uh, the champion of liberals, uh, retired from the court last week, just over 80, saying he didn't want to continue, and we are almost certain the president is going to nominate this man who is well, beside him. I am very pleased to announce that I will nominate Judge Clarence Thomas to serve as Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. President George H.W. Bush nominated Clarence Thomas on July 1, 1991, to replace Thurgood Marshall, who had announced his retirement as a Supreme Court Justice of the United States. At that time, Thomas was serving as a judge on the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, a position to which President Bush had appointed him in March 1990. The nomination process was fraught with controversy from the outset, particularly with regards to the issue of abortion. Many women's groups and civil rights organizations opposed Thomas based on his conservative political views, much as they had opposed Bush's Supreme Court nominee from the previous year, David Souter. The president of now Molly Yard testified that Souter would end freedom for women in this country. Souter was also opposed by the NAACP, which urged its 500,000 members to write letters to their senators asking them to oppose the nomination. On October 15, 1991, Thomas was confirmed to the Supreme Court of the United States by a narrow margin of 52 to 48 in the Senate. He was sworn in as a justice on October 23, 1991. Before nominating Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court, Attorney General Richard Thornburg had cautioned President Bush that it would be challenging to go through the confirmation process if the selected candidate was perceived as not sharing the same views as Thurgood Marshall, who was a respected civil rights figure. Despite the warning, the Thomas nomination was met with strong opposition from various groups, including the NAACP, Urban League, and National Organization for Women, who believed that Thomas's appointment could shift the court's ideological balance to the right. The groups were particularly against Thomas's nomination due to his criticism of affirmative action and concerns over his stance on Roe v. Wade. The Alliance for Justice, an umbrella group that includes various civil rights organizations, argued that elevating Judge Thomas to the Supreme Court would be a rejection of Thurgood Marshall, the celebrated civil rights lawyer who won the landmark Brown v. Board of Education case and became the first black justice. The group cited Thomas's belief that the court had reached the correct conclusion in Brown, but had used an incorrect legal rationale, among other issues. That belief left it open to being overturned. Meanwhile, People for the American Way Action Fund a liberal advocacy group that also opposed Thomas's nomination, accused him of attacking and disparaging the Brown ruling. The group further claimed that Thomas's application of natural law philosophy in discussing cases such as Brown could lead to dangerous and significant reversals of Supreme Court precedents. An amicus brief is a legal document submitted to a court by a person or group that is not a party to the case but has a strong interest in its outcome. The purpose of an amicus brief is to provide additional information or arguments that may assist the court in making its decision. The person or group submitting the brief is known as an amicus curiae, which is Latin for friend of the court. Amicus briefs are often filed in cases that have broad implications beyond the parties involved, and they can be particularly influential in cases where the legal issues are complex or where the court is considering a novel legal question. Ginny Thomas, who identifies herself as a culture warrior and extreme right-wing activist, has connections to over half of the anti-abortion groups and individuals who lobbied her husband Clarence Thomas and his fellow U.S. Supreme Court justices before their landmark decision to overturn a woman's right to abortion. Fifty-one percent of the parties who submitted amicus briefs advocating for the end of federal abortion rights have political connections to Ginny Thomas, wife of Clarence Thomas, raising concerns about a potential conflict of interest within the highest levels of the U.S. judiciary. The decision to overturn the constitutional right to an abortion in Dobbs v. Jackson was made by a 6-3 to three conservative majority on the Supreme Court, bolstered by the appointments of three conservative justices by former President Donald Trump. This ruling was one of the most significant in the court's 233-year history and has led to a rapid proliferation of partial or total abortion bans in Republican-controlled states, affecting nearly one in three women aged 15 to 44. As of January 2023, 24 U.S. states have banned abortion 
or are likely to do so six months post Roe. The Thomas's actions are creating a precedent of allowing too close of an association between the Supreme Court and those who litigate before it. This is not the first instance in which Mrs. Thomas has interacted with those who appear before the court and seek her husband's vote. Despite being dubbed a radical insurrectionist for her role in supporting Trump's efforts to undermine the 2020 presidential election, Ginny Thomas's husband, Clarence Thomas, has refused to recuse himself from cases related to the insurrection. In January, he was the only justice to dissent in an 8-to-1 decision, allowing the House committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol to review hundreds of documents held by the National Archives. It was later revealed that Ginny Thomas exchanged 29 text messages with Trump's White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, leading up to January 6th, urging him to block Joe Biden's victory. These text messages may have been among the documents sought by the committee, with Clarence Thomas being the sole justice opposing disclosure. Many legal experts and activists have been calling for stricter ethical guidelines and rules for the Supreme Court, including a formal code of conduct that the justices would be required to follow. Some have even called for an independent ethics commission to oversee the court. In 2021, a group of Democrats in the House of Representatives introduced a bill called the Supreme Court Ethics Act which would require the justices to adopt a code of conduct and establish an outside entity to investigate and enforce ethical violations. However, the bill has not yet advanced in Congress. The lack of clear ethical guidelines and rules for the Supreme Court has raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest and compromised judicial independence, particularly in cases where the justices or their spouses have close ties to parties involved in the case. It is true that Ginny Thomas's ties to anti-abortion groups could have serious implications for future cases that come before the court. Given Clarence Thomas's strong conservative views and his recent vote in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, it is possible that he may seek to challenge the constitutional right to same-sex marriage, same-sex relations, and contraception in future cases. If Ginny Thomas maintains close ties to groups that lobby on these issues, it could be seen as a conflict of interest if Clarence Thomas hears these cases, as he may be influenced by his wife's connections to the groups involved. This underscores the need for stronger ethical guidelines for the Supreme Court justices to prevent potential conflicts of interest. In his concurring opinion in the Dobbs v. Jackson ruling that overturned Roe v. Wade, Justice Clarence Thomas cited the Due Process Clause as the basis for the decision, and called for other cases based on interpretations of the clause to be reconsidered in the future. Thomas acknowledged that the cases he cited were not at issue in the Dobbs ruling, but argued that the same reasoning applied to them. This has raised concerns among some legal analysts and activists that Thomas may use this decision to challenge other landmark cases, such as those related to same-sex marriage, same-sex relations, and contraception. The Supreme Court of the United States holds the highest authority within the federal judiciary system of the United States. It possesses final jurisdiction over all federal court cases, as well as state court cases that involve matters pertaining to U.S. constitutional or federal law. Justices have lifetime tenure, meaning they remain on the court until they die, retire, resign, or are impeached and removed from office. Die, retire, resign, or are impeached and removed from office.